What's up? It's Chris, the Drone Geek, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Drones. Before we jump into the actual topic for today's video, I did want to just give you an update on what's going on with the Let's Build that I'm doing with the Cinewoop drone. Now, when those of you that fly FPV heard me be extremely ambitious, and at the time I didn't know how ambitious I was actually being, announcing that I was gonna do this let's build in such a short time frame, or I was at least going to start it in a short time frame, I'm sure all of you had a pretty good chuckle, or at least some of you did. It wasn't until I did my research and started looking up the information about different parts, how they work together, how they're compatible, and what you need to do to fly FPV, that I realized how monumental of a task that could be for somebody like me that's very, very green when it comes to FPV. The first obstacle I ran into was that I need my ham radio operator's license, the amateur version, but I need that before I can actually fly FPV. At least that's what I read. If you know different, please let me know down in the comments. But right now, that's what I'm faced with. Before I build this thing, I want to make sure I can go out and fly it right away so I can test my build. So in order to do that, I need that license. I'm studying for that right now, I'm learning as much as I can. I'm not doing that part of it on my YouTube channel because I feel it's just a little bit too far removed from the actual drones themselves. Yeah, it's a part of flying. FPV, but it's something I really don't want to get into because I feel like I'm going to bore the hell out of everybody if I do a study session of the ham radio operator license test. So we're not doing that. And until I get that, I won't be starting the Let's Build series. But the other thing that you might be able to help me out with right now is that I ran into a problem understanding what parts and components I would need. So I was going through shopping and I found a lot of DIY kits were sold out or unavailable for at least the next few months. That took a really low hanging fruit solution away from me because I thought, well, worst case scenario, I'll buy a DIY kit and we'll just build that together. Close enough, right? But then I started going through the parts because I thought, well, if there's no DIY kit, I'm just going to have to piece this thing together and understand what I need ahead of time. Yeah, not only do I need to understand what I need ahead of time, which I feel like I've got a pretty good grasp on, I need them to all be compatible. Now, most of the time you're not gonna have a problem, but there are certain instances where parts aren't compatible with one another. So I really need to make sure I get that right. Not that I feel like we're gonna actually hit the thousand dollar mark. This is gonna be a pretty baseline drone. I don't need a lot of bells and whistles. And really, it's gonna be my first time flying FPV, so I don't want it to be real expensive because I have a feeling that I'm probably gonna crash it. I'm sorry, I know I was really looking forward to it and I wanted to jump into it sooner rather than later, but I found out in order to do it right, I have a lot of homework to do, a lot more than I thought I did originally. But enough about that. Let's get into today's video. Today's video comes as an inspiration from my search for FPV parts. Now, the reason I started looking at FPV and seriously deciding I'm gonna jump into it, especially with remote ID coming, I don't know what that has in store for me, so it's sort of a risk to even get into it when I don't know if I'll be able to fly that drone in two years time, but I'm looking for something that's going to give me a little bit more shiny new excitement. The Maverick 2 Pro is great. I love flying it. It's an awesome aerial imaging tool and I enjoy what I do every time I go out and put that thing in the air. However, I've gotten used to it. I've learned the drone inside and out. There's nothing that can really surprise me with it now. So it's sort of one of those deals where the excitement's kind of gone. I don't know how to explain it. I don't want to sound too down on it because I still love what I do. But at the same time, I'm just, I'm looking for something new. I'm itchy. You know what I mean? I don't have fleas. I'm, I'm, I am I'm want a new experience. So after realizing what a monumental task I have at hand when it comes to learning and then getting into FPV drones, I turn my attention back to drones that aren't necessarily a part of the DJI family. My big frustration with DJI has been their lack of innovation as it relates to the Mavic, Phantom, and Inspire series of drones. And I don't mean their latest iterations because if we're being totally honest, they're all still at the top of the food chain. They're all great options, and they really outdo even the newer drones from Autel, Skydio, and other competitors. However, they lack innovation when it comes to coming up with new iterations in those series of drones. We haven't heard even so much as a whisper about the Phantom series. We haven't heard a titter about the Inspire series. And the best thing we have to go on is a potential leaked blueprint of the Mavic 3. And if that's true, if that's actually happening, it's not gonna happen until 2022. And between now and then, they're already teasing a Mini 3. What is going on? 
I just feel betrayed that DJI has turned their attention completely to the entry level market. It's a smart business idea and it's a smart business strategy. They're gonna nip the people that are just getting into drones that want that beginner and base level drone to start with. They're gonna get them all and they're gonna be able to integrate them into their prosumer community a little bit more easily. But I feel like in the meantime, while they're implementing that plan and taking action on executing that strategy, they've completely forgotten about those of us that have already Already invested in their prosumer solutions. This is a point that I've been talking about time and time again on this channel, but I can't stress it enough. As a DJI fanboy, and I have been a DJI fanboy for the last four years, I just feel left in the dark. I don't have any idea of what's going on, and I know I'm not alone. There are thousands, if not millions of people that feel the exact same way I do. What also makes it challenging is that I'm running a drone business. I'm running an aerial imaging business. And unless I know what the next iteration of the Mavic or the Phantom or the Inspire is going to have to offer, it's hard for me to know what I'm going to be capable of in the future. Yeah, the Mavic 2 Pro gets the job done. 4K is the industry standard and it shoots at a max frame rate of 30 frames per second at 4K, which is going to be just perfect. As long as it can get 24 to 30 frames per second at 4K, I'm going to be fine for the foreseeable future. But with other solutions coming out with even better resolution, it gives them more flexibility in how they shoot edit, and then produce their video and images. I've never shopped outside of DJI seriously before, and I certainly haven't shopped this much before because they're just the best and you have to admit it. Everybody hates DJI and it's sort of the evil empire syndrome. If they're the best at it, people tend to just hate them. It's like the Lakers, like the Yankees, whatever the analogy you wanna use, that's what DJI is in the world of drones. But that analogy isn't totally accurate. It's not like DJI is untouchable. There are other companies that have really solid solutions that can compete with what DJI has out right now. And we're gonna talk about three alternatives to DJI products that'll help you accomplish your goals as an aerial imaging specialist. Let's get into it right now with number one, the Autel Evo 2. The specs on the Autel Evo 2 Pro are absolutely incredible and very, very comparable to the Mavic 2 Pro and the Phantom 4 version 2. Let's start with the sensor size, a one inch CMOS sensor for the Autel Evo 2 Pro. It takes 20 megapixel photos and has an adjustable aperture from f2.8 to f11, stacking right up against the Mavic 2 Pro in terms of versatility when it comes to exposing the perfect shot. It's also got a three times lossless zoom and it's a maximum video resolution of 6K at 30 frames per second. Nothing like it in the prosumer market at this point. The Autel Evo 2 Pro is fantastic when it comes to video versatility. It also shoots at 120 megabits per second and has 360 degree obstacle avoidance. It has a 10 bit color log, which will give you really nice versatility when it comes to post-production and bringing out whatever color theme you want in that footage. Really, really flexible stuff. It has a 5.5 mile maximum range between the drone itself and the controller and the battery can offer 40 minutes of flight time in perfect conditions. Now to summarize what I feel about the Autel Evo 2, this is the close thing you're going to get to a challenger to the Mavic 2 Pro, the Phantom 4 version 2, and the Inspire 2. Now the Inspire 2 is just outside of the realm of prosumer. Its price tag is somewhat reasonable, but it really truly delivers cinema grade results out of its camera. So we'll sort of push that to the side now. But when it comes to the Mavic 2 Pro and the Phantom 4 version 2, the Autel Evo 2 definitely stacks up. It's got a lot of great features on it. And if you're looking for something to deliver professional quality images and video, but you don't want to buy either a Mavic 2 Pro or a Phantom 4 version 2, the Autel Evo 2 is your best choice. Our next option is the Sky Do 2. The specs on the Sky Do 2 don't quite stack up the same way as the Autel Evo 2 to the Phantom 4 version 2 and the Mavic 2 Pro, but there's still nothing to scoff at. Sensor size is a half inch CMOS sensor, takes 12 megapixel photos, and has 13 stops of dynamic range. The max video resolution is 4K at 60 frames per second. You're gonna get buttery smooth 4K out of the Sky Do 2. It shoots video at 100 megabits per second and has a 23 minute flight time. It flies at a max of 36 
miles per hour, and it has a maximum two mile range between the drone and the controller. Now, why are those last two specs important? It's because the highlight feature of the Sky DO2 is its ability to basically fly itself, autonomous flight. It has 360 degree obstacle avoidance. Each one of the sensors is a one third inch CMOS sensor that shoots in 4K at 30 frames per second, and the total megapixels for all of the obstacle avoidance sensors is 48 megapixels. That is absolutely incredible. To give you an idea of how that stacks up against the Mavic 2 Pro and the Phantom 4 version 2, their obstacle avoidance cameras add up somewhere in the ballpark between 6 and 12 megapixels. That's total. The other cool thing that the Sky DO2 has that no other drone on the market has is the Sky DO Beacon. So essentially you hold this little piece of technology in your hand or in your pocket and you program it to your Sky DO2 and it will follow that beacon wherever it goes and avoid obstacles while it does it. It's absolutely incredible and it provides a really unique flight experience, especially if you're a beginner or if you're looking for something that has a little bit more autonomy to it. Now, I alluded to this throughout the list of specs for the Sky DO2. It is not a replacement solution for the likes of the Mavic 2 Pro or the Phantom 4 version 2. However, this does deliver big if you're looking for an autonomous flight system. Whether it's tracking yourself while you're riding your bike or hiking or jogging, whatever the case may be, the Sky DO2 has zero competition in the field. It is the top of the food chain when it comes to obstacle avoidance and autonomous operation. You won't get anything better on the market right now. And on that note, it is really good for beginners because of that spatial awareness it has around it in its obstacle avoidance system. So if you're looking for something that has a high output out of the camera, that 4K at 60 frames per second is going to be beautiful on just about any screen, but you're a little nervous to buy something that doesn't have quite as many safety features, the Sky DO2 is perfect for you because it is nearly impossible to crash. You almost have to intentionally do it to get that thing to run into something. And option number three is the Parrot Anafi. Now the specs on the Parrot Anafi don't quite pack the same punch as those on the Autel Evo 2 or the Sky DO2, but they're nothing to scoff at either, especially when you consider the price tag on the Parrot Anafi, which is significantly less than both of our alternative options to DJI and especially to our DJI products. The Parrot Anafi has a half inch CMOS sensor and shoots 16 to 21 megapixel photos depending upon the settings. Its aperture is f2.4, it has a max video resolution of 4 4K cinema at 24 frames per second and a max video bitrate of 100 megabits per second. It has a 2.8 times lossless zoom, a 25 minute flight time, and a maximum range of 2.5 miles in perfect conditions. Now look, we just went through that list of specs for the Parrot and Afi, and you might be thinking, well, these don't even come close to the Mavic 2 Pro, the Phantom 4, whatever. And that's true. They don't really come all that close. Now, it's not necessarily totally out of the league of those two drones, but it does have something that those two don't. And that's a reasonable price tag. The Parrot Anafi is extremely inexpensive when you consider what you're getting for the price tag. It starts at $899 for the drone, a controller, an extra battery, and a carrying case. That's pretty darn good when you stack it up against the Mavic 2 Pro and the Phantom 4 version 2. Inexpensive, but at least somewhat close to the same ballpark in terms of specs and what the camera can actually provide you as an aerial imaging solution. So there you have it. There's three really great alternatives to the Mavic 2 Pro and the Phantom 4 version 2 especially, but any of the DJI products really. Make sure you leave a comment down below if I missed any other drones that might stack up nicely against DJI's leading products. I'd love to know what you're flying with if you're not using a DJI product and what your experience has been like. Before we go though, I do have two more things I wanna to touch on. First of all, I'm changing my format up just a little bit in these videos. Before, I wanted to get everything perfect. I wanted to hit every syllable. I didn't want any stuttering, no ums, ahs, anything like that. Well, I'm changing that. I feel like it's a little stiff, a little rigid, a little inauthentic. I'm a very conversational person. So being able to just flow and stumble over my words if I need to and just power through it is exactly how I want to present myself because that's really who I am. Plus, I really hate jump cutting all the time, every time I mess up, which happens to be quite a bit. The second thing is, this is past Chris. I filmed this video last week, 
And currently I'm in the city of Nashville, Tennessee, having a great time at a bachelor party. I'm also gonna be creating a vlog out of that trip and I'll be sharing that here on the YouTube channel in the very near future. So I just wanted to make sure you had a video for this week, decided to record this a little bit earlier than I usually do. Usually I give myself about a two or three day cushion. This time I'm giving myself more like six or seven days. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button down below. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button too. It helps me out a lot. And if you love drone content, you're going to love my channel. I do all sorts of different things relating to drones. I talk about them. I've got a podcast. I use drones to create multimedia presentations. Whatever the case may be, if you love drone content, stick around because I've got a lot here for you. This is your second reminder to hit that subscribe button. Remember, we're on the quest to 1,000 subscribers. That hasn't gone anywhere. And to help me out, if you've already subscribed, make sure you share this video, especially with your friends that love drones too, because if you encourage them to subscribe, they can then encourage two of their friends to subscribe and so on and so forth. And we'll be at 1,000 in absolutely no time. Until next time, I'm Chris, the Drone Geek, and I am out of here.